Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Rebel Nutritionist. I'm your host, Meryl Bramline, and I'm the owner of the Bramline Institute for Nutrition and Wellness, a holistic wellness center located in beautiful South Florida. We'll focus on nutrition, movement, and emotional balance so that when it comes to the real skinny about health, you'll have all the information you need to meet your own personal goals. We're excited to show you the way to long-term healthy living. So let's dive in and get started. Welcome back, everybody, to the Rebel Nutritionist Podcast. Today, I'm super excited. I have my <laughs> old, dear, good, not old, <laughs> not old, good friend, uh, Dr. Tammy Fairman, and uh, super excited to talk about the your transformation. So mm-hmm. she went from plastic surgeon to soul surgeon, and I am going to let you explain <laughs> what that is. And uh, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Meryl. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for this opportunity, the honor and the privilege of talking to all your beautiful listeners. Um, Meryl and I go way back, Mm -hmm. but neither of us are old friends. (laughs) We're just (laughs) heart friends. So uh, a lot of you may already know me. I've worked as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon for over 20 years really taking people through a transformational life journey. So Mm -hmm. uh, mostly supporting women on the outside, Mm -hmm. you know, taking care of the uh, extrinsic, the physical body with all the beautiful tools that we have. And And you did it so beautifully too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you, I know, everyone's still crying. Yes, we're all pining for the fact that you're not doing that anymore, but I, I, I digress. Well, you know, I think this is a beautiful opportunity to remember that we can transform Mm -hmm. and we can transition and you know recently I uh, did a talk about the time of menopause and Mm -hmm. how menopause is really a time of transformation Mm -hmm. and I I labeled it the dawn of awakening I thought that was kind of like right that's a cute cute name for it because we women do get to transform and transition Mm -hmm. and shift and change we don't have to stay rigidly where we are and Mm -hmm. so that brings me to this next stage of my life, which is working now as a soul surgeon. So I've put down the scalpels, <laughs> and I've used a lot of them in my life, put down the scalpel and really work on dissecting and teasing out and diving deep into thoughts, feelings, belief systems, intentions. Mm-hmm. And this is a way of truly supporting my beautiful women clients and patients in awakening in their lives. Mm -hmm. It's a way of really finding your true self, Mm -hmm. your authentic self, and living from that space. And sometimes that requires a transition or a transformation or a shifting in your life. Um, And sometimes it doesn't. It just brings you more clarity that you are where you need to be or where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So the soul surgeon, this is what I do. This is really beyond what I do. This isn't work. This is who I am, you know, uh, we can't really do this kind of work or live in this kind of space without really engaging in this work for Mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you just talk. You've got to really walk the walk. hundred percent. I know you know that. We talked about that yesterday, right? Embodying it, not just thinking it, embodying it. So I think that's phenomenal. And one thing that you said that I really want to highlight because maybe, and we can start on this or wherever I, we, we have so many directions that we can (laughs) go in, but, um, the authenticity part of it. Yeah. I had interviewed someone, we talked about being in your authentic self. And I think as women, it is so hard. Mm -hmm. And then we get Mm -hmm. to this stage in life. And I love that you talk about menopause being the awakening because I so believe that. And, you know, my strength came when I went, was starting to Mm -hmm. go through that. I don't, and my strength and my voice, maybe Mm -hmm. it happened to coincide with the fact that I was getting divorced. Maybe it happened to coincide with the fact that I was finding my voice and that I wasn't settling for what didn't serve me. Right. Like I get the chills thinking about that, talking about that, because I feel like women, when they talk about menopause, it's like, oh, I'm at the end. Oh, it's like it's a negative connotation. And I think that it's a time where, you know, women come into their own knowledge and to their own power. It is a true reawakening. So I definitely want to. and And I do think women need to step into their authenticity on that. So like, what, what's your, what do you feel about that? I love that, Meryl. I love what you just opened. And there's nothing like talking from personal experience, direct Mm -hmm. experience. That's why you got the little goosies. You got the little goosebumps, you know, because 
we feel it. We know it to be true. It's mm-hmm. not a knowing in our mind. It's really a knowing, a full body. Yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> full like, body. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So, you know, the reason that it came to me to call menopause the dawn of awakening is because of everything you just said. Mm-hmm. It's really a moment uh, that's an opportunity. It's mm-hmm. an opportunity to transition, to awaken, and to ask yourself, what do I want? Yeah. What do I want? Where am I in my life? You know, taking inventory. We take inventory of so many things, you know, mm-hmm. when we do our grocery shopping, uh, when we plan our vacations, and we rarely really sit with the truth of ourselves oh, yeah. and ask ourselves, what do I want now? Not 30 years ago when I trained as a surgeon, mm-hmm. let's say for me, talking mm-hmm. about my personal experience. I've lived a very incredible career. I feel really complete in that career. And so I get to ask myself in the new moment, what do I want now? Mm-hmm. What is my soul asking for? What is my soul needing? And so for us women in particular, and I, you know, both Meryl and I have worked, uh, I would say, would you say predominantly with women? Not exclusively. Not exclusively. Not for you, you know, it's funny. I you. Was, yeah, I think I yeah. was thinking about it. I'm like, wow, we really mm-hmm. do have a lot of men. And, yes. But, yes, but you, we, you know, I think women are better at advocating for themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I think, I think, so I think we see more of them. Yeah, um, but this applies, of course, this applies to everyone. You know, and 100%. there is a, a male menopause, guys. Yes, so listen there up. Is. There we is. talked about that. It is on one of our episodes. Paul Goodkin and I Look did that. So go back and listen yes. to that because there is. There you and, go. And I do think this can apply to men as, yeah, as much as women. Sure. But yes, we listen. are kind of segmenting on the women population. <laughs> you know what? At the end of the day, if you've got a mind right. and you've got a body, this is for you. Turn 100%. it on. Turn this on and listen up because this is really not exclusive to any gender, no. any socioeconomic status. This is really about being a soul in a body, mm-hmm. being having the human experience. Yes. And what do you want to do with it? Where do you want to go? And so I can speak as a woman because that's been my life experience. For me, what I've experienced is that many women, we get so caught up to the point of getting lost mm. in our lives. 100%. You know, I uh, got married at 30. At 31, had my first of five children. So my 30s. <laughs> yeah, let's take a deep breath. My mind, right? Like, can we? Woo. Okay. <laughs> so my 30s were really 10 years of having babies yes. and building my surgical practice. So I was an entrepreneur. I was a mom, a mm-hmm. wife, and of course, taking care of the entire household mm-hmm. and pretty much the universe, mm-hmm. <laughs> as most of us do. We, we kind of give ourselves that title. But you know what? We get to revamp. We get to mm-hmm. really sit still for a moment, wherever you are in your life. And you might be younger or older. It's not an age thing. Mm-hmm. It's really an... It's a thing that is kind of itching. It's it's calling you. Yeah. It's nudging you to wake up, to wake up in your life. And what do I mean by wake up? I'm talking about what you mentioned, which is authenticity. Mm-hmm. It's really about awakening to who am I mm-hmm. in this life? Because we've got one life, mm-hmm. you know? We've got the first breath and the last breath, and we just don't know when that's going to be. And just as beautifully as Mary Oliver, the poet, says, you know, tell me, what will you do with your one wild and precious life? Mm-hmm. We really owe it to ourselves to pause and ask that question. I pose that question to all of my clients mm-hmm. because... We don't do that enough. No. And if we don't no. do that, we don't really know where we are. That's the taking inventory. Mm-hmm. And so there's another, you could see I'm a poet. I've been writing poetry <laughs> since I was since Beautiful, I was a teenager. Yes. I love poetry. So I quote from beautiful poets and Rumi, the 13th century um, Sufi poet, he has a couple of lines in a poem called The Breeze at Dawn. Mm-hmm. And I might be paraphrasing, so please, all you Rumi fanatics, don't, <laughs> d- d- don't bother Meryl and go, she said it wrong. Right. Okay, this is a paraphrasing because you know what? We take what we hear and we integrate it and we make right. it our own. Uh, yes. So, so Rumi is the inspiration. And what he said was something to the extent of, the breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. Mm. What do you want? Don't go back to sleep. And it goes on for a couple more uh, Mm -hmm. paragraphs, Mm -hmm. stanzas. So this is what I invite you. I invite you to ask yourself, where in my life am I asleep? Mm -hmm. And asleep can look different ways. You know, asleep can look like numb. It can look dissociated. It can look very busy. I I recently came across uh, a beautiful little expression called weapon of mass distraction. (laughs) 
How good is that, right? Weapon snap, of snap. mass, yes, distraction, right? love it. Yes, and often the way we are asleep in our lives is by just adding more distractions. Mm -hmm. And distractions can look like food, which is a very big part of the work oh, that yeah. you do for sure. It can look like over-exercising, you know, things that look good to us, but when we use, overuse, or abuse, mm -hmm. and we're running away rather than coming closer to ourselves, that can be a way of distracting ourselves. So yeah. I, I invite you to ask yourself, what is your preferred weapon of mass distraction? How do you stay asleep in your yeah. own life? And this is really the, the soul work that I do. This is the soul surgery, you know, yeah. and, and it's not always yeah. comfortable. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not always comfortable to right. look at ourselves honestly, transparently, and I'm going to say the N-word, naked. Yeah. <laughs> That's a yeah. word that as a plastic surgeon, I heard a lot of patients not right. being very comfortable with that. Yeah. But really being naked with ourselves, yes. naked in our honesty and our transparency and our truth so that we can find those spaces within that still have not awakened. So don't go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. That is amazing. Mm. Um, and it's so true. You know, you're, you're talking and I'm going, wow, it, it is so profound mm. and simple yeah. that, but yet we're not doing it. And I, and I do think, like you said, so many women are walking around distracted. And, and it is true, right? There's seasons in our lives. I mean, I was thinking back, yeah, in my 30s, I was having kids. I happened to, that's when I got sick, right? And then I was doing my own recovery, but I was still taking care of my kids and like you, trying to uh, run a business. And my headspace was not in mm -hmm. this, right? It mm -hmm. was not in the soul search. Plus, it wasn't really talked about. Yeah, you, We didn't even, I remember one time after I had... Um, finished radiation therapy, I was doing some yoga, I was having a hard time with the heart openers, and uh, someone had said to me, oh, well, you have to work on your heart and your soul, and I looked at them, you know, I'm 34, and I'm going, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> right? Now it's a whole other thing. Now I'm like, yes, I just want to do all these heart openers. Um, so I also think it's, um, it is taking the time to take a moment and reflect, and um, be in a space in your life that you can bring that in. Although, although I would also like to say that maybe it's more about creating that space, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, for people. Yeah. Because I feel like, yes, as women get older and the kids get older, like it's this, you see this trajectory, right? As the kids get older, we don't need to be as much hands-on. Mm -hmm. I mean, present, of course, sure. right? But we don't need to be the hands-on, like, hovering. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you can kind of start dabbling in the things that you want. You have a little more time if you, if you allow yourself and if you recognize it. I think that's the other piece is taking that moment of space and time to be like, yeah, what is my vision for my... What... Yeah. All those soulful yeah. things. So, yeah. I, and I think a big part of it is fear. Mm -hmm. that resistance so how mm -hmm. do you address that you know because I, I remember for me it was first of all you don't know where to like what how do I even yeah. start this um, and there's so much information out there yeah. so how do you yeah. kind of walk people through like what is that addressing that first thing because we talked mm -hmm. a little bit about that mm -hmm. yesterday too so I'd love for you to yeah yeah uh, you opened up so many spaces <laughs> so many spaces <laughs> You guys, I hope you book the afternoon for this because uh, we're parking it and yeah. we're getting into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think these are such important conversations, Meryl, you know, and really this is the space that I marinate in. This is mm -hmm. the space that I live my life. So let, let's start getting into it. First of all, what I was referring to before and as you were in our 30s, even 40s, we're so busy. We've got the kids if we choose to have that or mm -hmm. family. We may have a partner, a household, mm -hmm. a career. So we do get busy and we do stay asleep to a certain degree because we're just so proactive and active and, and multitasking, yeah. right? We're the queen of multitaskers. We're all good at that. But that AAA battery that we yeah. live from starts waning down a little bit as we get older. It's, mm -hmm. it's a real thing, ladies, it really is. And we start slowing down a little bit to notice that there are certain aches and pains, certain mm -hmm. areas in our lives that are just frustrating. You know, we feel resistance, we mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable, we're unhappy, we're just mm -hmm. not feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So those are the nudges. 
and we get to really ask ourselves, am I really paying attention? Am I listening to the whispers? Mm. Or am I waiting for a brick to fall on my head, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. to let me know? I say okay. the same thing, right? Your right? body whispers until it roars. That's it. That's it. The body, the soul, that authentic self that wants to really express itself fully in this life. That's that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. We really are here to fully express ourselves, whatever it means to each of us mm -hmm. at different stages in our lives. Yeah. So the question is really how, right? We're all, I'm sure all of you guys are going, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Just, just <laughs> give me the magic bullet. Just give me the pill. Right, how do right, I do right. this lady, Miss Soul Surgeon, right? Well, I'm going to tell you that we all, all of us, Meryl, me, all of us have blind spots. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that it becomes very difficult to do it alone. Yeah. Very difficult. So think about the, um, think about the horses in Central Park, right? Mm -hmm. When you go on a little, you know, uh, carriage ride, those horses have blinders on. Okay. So when we have blinders on, we just don't see beyond what we see. Mm -hmm. So those horses just know the path that they walk every time that same path. They have no idea that if they just opened up those blinders yeah. just a little bit, holy smokes, there's New York City yeah. and there's a <laughs> lot more to life right. <clears throat> than this path in Central Park. And so what happens is those are the blind spots that mm -hmm. we have that is very difficult to see them in ourselves. Is it impossible? No. Right. Does it take practice? Yes. Why not use and have a catalyst, mm -hmm. right? You are an expert in the work that you do and you support people in regaining their whole body health, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I'm an expert in what I, what I do as a soul surgeon and I support people in shedding light. It's like a little flashlight going into the little cobwebs of the mind, you know, saying, huh, it's a little dark in there, but I see something. So I can see in you what you cannot see in yourself. Right. Either because of resistance, mm -hmm. because of fear, which you mentioned, which is huge. All of us have fears that we carry. Because of past traumas. And trauma doesn't have to be a trauma with a capital T. Right. We all, through this life, have traumas. They could be micro traumas, small traumas, but they add up. You know, if you were a 10 year old girl studying your piano for a piano recital and you were so excited to share it with your father, who is a professional prodigy pianist, and he doesn't show up, by the way, this happened to my mother and she's okay with my sharing. And he doesn't show up and he gives you flowers later, but he wasn't there and you froze when you went to play because all you could do was look in the audience looking for him. See, now I got yeah, my Yeah, I'm goosies. getting this one too. Right? <laughs> right, because the personal is universal because all yes. of you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it wasn't a piano recital, but maybe it was a different Something. experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we hide and resist and push away and compartmentalize, all of those little traumas or big traumas, some of us have had bigger challenges in our lives. Mm -hmm. We are not living the fullest expression of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we push away those, those fears because we're so terrified to open them up. So it's like that analogy of the closet that has yeah, all the stuff you just keep shoving. You know, you got the winter clothes, the <laughs> summer clothes, you got your bat and your bowling ball and, and you're working so hard to hold that closet door closed yeah. because you're terrified. And of course you are. It makes sense. It's right. scary to open that up. Yeah. And that's where we need support. And you know what? Life is made just difficult enough that we need each other. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to do this alone. And that's something that I can speak to from personal experience. Yeah. I was the loner. I <laughs> was the, you know, the superwoman. I had my cape going in the breeze. Yeah. You know, a lot of you women know what I'm talking about. That superwoman that just takes care of everything. Oh yeah. To Same. the point right of there self, with you. right? And to the point of self detriment. Yes. So I want to let you all know now publicly. I have retired my cape. <laughs> it had, you know, we've had a burning ceremony for the cape. We've Amazing. blessed it and released it because we don't need to do this life alone. We can use catalysts, people in our life like Meryl or myself. If something speaks to you, other professionals that can support you in facing the fears and facing those yeah. parts of yourself that yeah. you've been running away from. Because at the end of the day, Meryl, and I know this is one long run on sentence, so I'm going to pause in a second and take a yeah. breath. But you can see I get excited about this because my life has transformed deeply. And I know yours mm -hmm. has too, mm -hmm. through this work, this yeah. work of mindful presence and awakening and not staying asleep in our lives. So 
the path is to do it together. Yes. To not need to do it alone. And the way through it is to actually walk through it. Mm -hmm. That's how we get to the other side. And we can do it holding hands with someone who's a professional who can really support us. Yeah. So, yay. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was just, you know, you said it was just so well said. And to that point of, you know, wearing the cape. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, right. Been there, done that, got the medal and somehow didn't feel much better when, uh, through any of it. And, yeah. and I think that is part of, you know, we talked about our belief systems. We talked about the stories. I think that those are the stories that we heard as, as young women. It's like, you gotta be able to do it all. You gotta be, and, and, you know, don't complain. And, that asking for help was a sign of weakness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know men feel this exponentially more than yes. women, right? But I know, I mean, you felt it, I felt it, I think as yeah. career and professional women. But even as when, you know, mom's taking care of kids, it's like, why do we think that we get the badge of honor if we do it alone and don't ask for help? Yet when you look at every uh, in, indigenous culture, when you look at communities in you know, in, uh, outside of this country, yeah. cultures, they all rely on family and community to, to support them. And, you know, right, all, all uh, rising tide raises all boats. Like, yeah. why do we think that we have to be alone in this life raft? Yeah, that's it. And I think that's the story that we were told. And until I realized, like, wow, we can do this together. And it, it was a long time. You know, even through my illness, I people who wanted to, you know, take care of me or cook for me, or I'm like, no, 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 I got mm, it. I got it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that resistance yep. to that. Yep. And so now I'm I'm much more open and accepting. And I do think we've talked so much, even since the pandemic, here and the work that we do with our coaches and you and I, right, about creating community yes. because it is so important. We, you said it yesterday, right? We are humans thrive in community. Yeah. We are wired for it. We yes. are literally neurobiologically hacked <laughs> <laughs> to need each other. Yeah. So when we resist and we create that sense of isolation, that aloneness that leads to loneliness often, we are our own island and we yes. feel that separation. Mm -hmm. And that brings a lot of suffering. Yes. This is why I, I love what you opened up about community. You know, this is why I love to work with women that are younger as well. Mm -hmm. Because you and I, we have the wisdom of time and the wisdom of the years mm -hmm. and experience. And that's a beautiful thing. And the younger women, they need our support. Mm -hmm. And in other cultures, in yeah. Eastern cultures, it is the elders, and I'm proud to be an <laughs> elder, not old, elder, uh -huh. the elders, the ones that have garnered some right. life experience mm -hmm. that actually can support the youngsters and mentor and coach and consult and just right. be there for them, you know, like a, a maternal figure, a paternal figure. And so the younger women in their 30s, 40s that are trying to figure it out, they are struggling. And my sisters that are the sister surgeons, the sister doctors that are carrying the world on their shoulders like the Atlas at Rockefeller yeah. right. Plaza yeah. in New York, you know, that's holding the world up on their shoulders. They are suffering so deeply, mm -hmm. Meryl. I see truly mm -hmm. a pandemic of suffering oh, in yes. our healthcare system, in the women in particular, mm -hmm. men too, of course, but I work a lot with women and the women in particular that are carrying the, the, the healing and the health, yet they are not gifting it to themselves. No. They are not creating those spaces. Yeah. And that's where I say vulnerability, mm -hmm. that's the magic bullet. Oh my God, right? right? And it's so, and it is really, you know, one of the things we did a group program uh, back in September, Shari Coltoon and I and my coaches, we ran it, it was called Rebrand You and it was great. It was a great program. And the the women we had most uh, all women who were in it really came away because it was a, it was a tag team of this meant of this you know mindfulness piece and all of that. But the point being, the first few sessions, nobody wanted to share. Mm -hmm. Right? It is hard to be vulnerable, but I feel like our stories and when we are vulnerable to you guys, that it it, it kind of lets down that that facade of like oh I got to be tough, you know. And I think that serves us so much. Mm -hmm better than, than, you know, than doing that. But it is really hard 
to be vulnerable. So let's dive into a little bit, because you and I were talking a little bit yesterday about the how, and I found it fascinating of, of how you work with, with the women that you're working with. So share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to share. Thank you for asking. So the how is, uh, is the key, right? This is the, the real key of how do we shift our lives? Mm -hmm. How do we transform? How do we change out of areas that just don't work for us? So here we go. Let's just get into it. The key in my life experience is mm -hmm. the mind. Mm -hmm. Everything is born in the mind. Everything emanates from the mind. So when we can get to know our mind, get to know our thoughts, that's when we begin to have some agency over our lives. Mm -hmm. So awareness of thought and mm -hmm. mind brings choice, mm -hmm. right? When we're not aware, we're not, when we're not awake, I love right. the word awake because it's, you know, it just, it's just like, whoa, I'm awake. I'm awake now. You know, it's kind of like the ice bucket challenge. <laughs> I'm awake now. Hello. What are you telling me? Let me put a parenthesis. Unfortunately, many of us wake up with deep suffering, right? That is what wakes us up. That is the catalyst, but it doesn't need to be. I write mm -hmm. about that in my website. Mm -hmm. I write about my pains and what awakened me over 15 years ago, but it doesn't have to be that pain. It can be life is okay. And I'm just curious, what else, what else is here? So when we awaken and elevate our awareness, usually with support, because it is hard to know how to do this, right. we begin to have choice. And when we have choice, choice leads to freedom. Mm -hmm. The freedom to live differently, the freedom to transform our own suffering, our own pain, our own frustrations. So how do we do that? Really, it's all based in present moment awareness and mindfulness. So mindfulness is a beautiful tool. And meditation, these are all buzzwords that everybody knows, mindfulness, meditation. These are all just different tools. So, you know, I have a huge toolbox, as Meryl does. We have very big toolboxes for different personalities, for different mm -hmm. circumstances in life, right? Because what serves one person may not, may not resonate for another. So in general, it is really looking at how do I create presence in my life? Now, most people live like a floating head, disconnected. <laughs> yep. So we live in our thoughts, in our mind. We live disconnected and disembodied mm. from the body. And so what happens is we are not present. We're living, ruminating about the past and being sad and regretting, etc. Or we're living, worrying and planning out the future in this fantasy world that doesn't right. exist. Because you know what, my beautiful people? The future is simply made up of now plus now plus now. Mm -hmm. The future is not a thing or an entity or a place to go to. The future is made up of whatever you do in the now. So if right now I choose to come and work with Meryl and her team because I want that whole body wellness, I'm creating a path of well-being and wellness for my future. Mm -hmm. I'm preventatively and prophylactically creating health and wellness for myself. If I choose to do that in all areas of my life, now I'm creating mind, body, and soul connection. And that's where by landing in our bodies, mm -hmm. by using mindfulness tools, meditation is simply one of them. We get to really bring the honesty, the authenticity, the transparency through vulnerability and courage. It does take courage mm -hmm. to be vulnerable. It's not always comfortable. I, I get that. I was you. I was there. Yeah. We both were. We both were. So it just, it's a practice and it takes a little bit of hand holding. So mindfulness, this buzzword that everybody talks about, and my website is the mindful space. So I <laughs> caught on to it too. I love it. I yeah. love it. And by the way, my website is my initial. So TMF space.com is Tammy Marcella Fairman. So it just kind of worked out that way. Um, so I have to work on me being the mindful space right, as well. <laughs> so mindfulness is really made up of two wings, two wings of the same bird. Mm -hmm. And the first wing is awareness and the second is acceptance. Both of which sound very yeah. simple, right? I'm not selling you some big thing. I'm not selling you anything, by the All way. Right. If this resonates for you, fantastic. If it doesn't, that's okay. Timing is everything. So awareness and acceptance sound very simple and they are, mm -hmm. yet they're not that easy to incorporate in our lives. No. And that's where we can do it with others who can guide us through our blind spots. Awareness is coming back into the body so that we're not these floating heads just living in our thoughts, in our mm -hmm. minds of what we're going to do, you know, being 
human doings instead of human beings. Right. So through coming back into the body, through different tools like meditation, we start developing awareness. And then we bring in the challenging, challenging acceptance. Acceptance is the opposite of resistance. Right. Right. So all those things that we're resisting, once we open that closet door and just let the stuff right. fall out, yeah, we might have a bump toe, but we're actually going to feel free. Yes. And from that space of freedom, that's a space that opens up creativity, inspiration, mm -hmm. and you want to make decisions from that space. Right. So the trauma that we talked about before, whether it's a big T trauma or a little T trauma, that creates fragmentation. Right. It creates fragmentation in our minds, in mm -hmm. our bodies, mm -hmm. in our nervous system, and ultimately in the way we live our lives Absolutely. and how we relate and interrelate. You know, our lives are relational. Yes. Right? It's a relationship with ourselves and with everybody and everything mm -hmm. nature, people, children, work, colleagues, etc. So if we are not reintegrated, mm -hmm. taking our trauma and defragmenting it and bringing it back together to that wholeness that we already are. We just need to come back home. When we don't do that, yeah. we're living more of a tunnel vision life. Mm -hmm. We are restricted because of those traumas. So this is very doable work. I hope it didn't sound too heavy, but it is, it's transformative. It's yes. life changing. It opens up spaces that you've never even thought of. And I love this phrase. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. I say this to my kids all the time, you know, say, well, I don't want to do this. I don't want to try, you know, this new dish or whatever. And I tell them, you don't know what you don't know. This I may be your you. favorite, you know, broccoli dish. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, so I'm always all about the veggies, <laughs> right, Meryl? That's why Meryl and I are so close. <laughs> we talk the same language. Um, but, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So when you begin to take those blinders off, mm -hmm. you start saying, oh, my gosh, there's a whole world that I didn't even know was possible right. for me. So you begin to live from a different space. And that's where we need to look at the belief systems, the thought processes, and that's how mindfulness works. Awareness first, and then beginning to slowly chip away at right. acceptance, accepting what is, accepting our limitations, accepting the fact that we are humans in a human body and we do have limitations and that's okay mm -hmm. we can drop the resistance it's it's life-changing it is it is and and you know you it's it's so amazing that we both have you know we've transformed on our own paths and have convert you know it, it's like coming like you said coming back home right that we've both done it separately come together and so and our experiences have been very different yet we feel the same thing in terms of the soul connection and our mindfulness and um, the soul connection to ourselves, right? And to each other. So I think part of that for me, just to share my experience, I know you went with, you know, we talked a little bit about yours and we can get into that a little bit more as well. But, um, and I think it also is true when you come from sort of the medical model, right? We are very science oriented. We're like, where is the data? And, you know, we want it, we want, someone to prove it to us that it works. And this is the total antithesis of all of that. Mm. And like you said, we have been guided here based on our own experiences that in that model didn't serve us mm -hmm. <laughs> for so many reasons. And as, and, and it really has been a journey. I talk about this all the time when, when I, you know, talk about my story and that initially I was very resistant. And then as I started for me, it was sort of Joe Dispenza was the tipping point of, I read his books and then I finally went to one of his uh, retreats. And then I went to an advanced retreat and life has really shifted because as you say, yes, I was doing the work alone-ish, right? I was listening, but until I got into that community and listened to him and really embodied, and I think that's such an important word, right? Embodied not just the words he was saying and not just the philosophies, but then I lived it and I felt it, right? We do a lot of thinking. We talked about this yesterday. We do a lot of thinking with our heads and we don't do a lot of feeling with our body and our hearts. So it wasn't until I started to really get into the feeling and like you say, doing my own inventory and paying attention 
and creating my vision of what do I want for my life? What do I want this to look like? And rather than focusing on a future, right? Yeah. Running to the future, what is it that I want to feel now? Yes. Yes. Right? What is that feeling I want to feel right now and let and that is what will carry me. And and then it becomes this so I was meditating before I did Joe Dispenza. I went to Joe Dispenza, changed how I meditated, right? It was a very different kind of thing for me. Again, it's a different experience for everybody. But I made the time in my day to do my meditation, to do my journaling, because that allowed me to be so present in my life and take inventory. So <laughs> if you don't take the time in your life to do that, it'll, you just keep yeah. going on this hamster wheel. Yeah. And so... Um, I think one of the things that I, I wanted you to also talk about in so, and I think this is the benefit of working one on one. It's great to get all of this information on the internet and say mindfulness, right? But my experience was different than your experience. It'll be different from someone else's experience. Yeah. And so being able to, to work with someone in the nuances of how you think and how you feel, I think is also so important. Right, because everybody's experience and everybody's life is so different. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I really, there's again, there's so much to speak to. You open up so many uh, beautiful spaces. The first thing I, I, I'd like to say is, as we get into that, is that uh, my little tagline that I thought a lot about to put on <laughs> Instagram, you know, the, the you know, the, the social media world that is so important. Oh yeah. To think what really represents uh, what I do, and it's three words: spirituality, science and humor. Mm -hmm. So I want to go to speak just for a moment about what you said about how years ago, when we all started uh, this journey, there really wasn't science. Right. But that's not true today. Right. There are hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of articles of scientific data in the psychology uh, world, in the psychology literature, talking about the benefits of mindfulness, the mm -hmm. benefits of meditation, the benefits of present moment awareness. John Kabat-Zinn, who's called the father of mindfulness, if you don't know him, look him up. He's got a ton of uh, great mm -hmm. books and, and work that he does. But he created a program called Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction, which is now being used in hospitals mm -hmm. to reduce stress of cancer patients, of end of life uh, patients. And even the uh, it's being taught to the nurses and the doctors that are working in these stressful situation so Amazing. so the beautiful thing is for all of you doctor ladies yeah. like me that would like to see a little bit of research it's here we cannot turn away from it anymore the data is in this works mm -hmm. this works and the data it's incredible what they're collecting there's so much science around self-compassion and right. how life-changing self-compassion is so Science, spirituality, and humor is definitely where I'm at because I do have a, a background, you know, as an MD. I have a background in medicine and surgery. At the same time, being a soul surgeon is about your own direct experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I mentioned uh, often to, to my clients, you know, we can read and learn about things. So a great example, but, but we don't actually know them until we know them for ourselves. So the great example that I love to give is reading about sugar, right? Sugar is in everything, right? Or sugar substitutes, whatever you want to call it. So you can read about sugar, you can learn the chemical composition, know how to make it, how to use it, learn the history of it. But until you put a drop of sugar on the tip of your tongue, mm -hmm. you, my friend, don't know sugar. So it's that knowing through direct experience that is so important. And that's where the interrelational space of working with someone one-on-one -on -one makes all the difference mm -hmm. because we cannot see ourselves as clearly as we think. And that's where we hide from our own selves. And mm -hmm. that's where we put things in compartments. We don't look at them, right? Now, the good news is we do that because we are self-protective. Those are all protective right. mechanisms. We're not doing it because we're bad to ourselves or because we're dumb or we're not wise. No, 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 no. Those are actually spaces in ourselves that help ourselves get through life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes life is, well, oftentimes yeah. is challenging with a diagnosis, you know, like you experienced or with the trauma of a, a death of a best friend, like I experienced or a divorce that so many people experience or children with issues with mm -hmm. mental health issues or physical issues, which I also experienced. So life is going to keep happening. 
how are you going to show up? Right. That is the question. So how right. are you going to show up? Because life is going to keep happening. So it's not that all of a sudden I'm doing this mindfulness, present moment awareness, meditation work, and I'm some guru sitting on the top of a mountain and I'm floating and my, you know, I have a halo around me. My skin does glow though, because I have a good dermatologist. You know who you are. So, little shout out. But it's not like life stops happening. Life continues to happen, but I show up very differently. I have tools. I have a toolbox that I can tap into. Mm -hmm. I can check in with my feelings. I can check in with my thoughts and my self-limiting beliefs and look at what is really stopping me from fully experiencing my life yeah. in this difficult situation. So why do it alone? Ask yourself, why not get the support that you need and just dabble? Bringing curiosity into mm -hmm. these spaces is so important. You know, this is when I, I started coming to Merrill personally years ago. I was curious, you know, what are, can these blood tests show? You know, I've been vegetarian since college, so many, many years, and I'm sure that there are some deficits. So mm -hmm. I didn't just go to CVS and pick up one of everything, one of each bottle, right, you right. know, on, yeah. the, on the shelf and just try to figure it out myself and then Google, you know, should I be taking chondroitin, you know, yeah, right. glutamate, right. blah, blah, blah. I came to a professional and I said, Meryl, I'm really curious. Tell me what's going on with me. Those are my blind spots. Right. So we don't need to do this emotional work and live this life all alone. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And, and I think that's a great point. So to that, because I'm going to, because, you know, I can hear what people are saying. Oh, well, this stuff gets expensive or yeah. right. Or it's costly. Yeah. And here's what I want to say. It's all about priorities, right? We prioritize the things that we think are important. We invest in the things that we think are important, yet we don't invest in ourselves. Yeah. And I think as women, you know, one of the conversations that came up with me uh, that I have really worked on is that whole scarcity thing. It's the not enough. Mm -hmm. It's the I don't deserve. I think there's a lot of women listening who can resonate with that because I think we do get that message. Yeah. Um, when we're younger, at least our generation, I feel like that did. And so, um, you, a, I know, you know, there's, there's all kinds of programs and there's all kinds of, in, you know, investments. You can spend a little, you can spend a lot. That, that wasn't the point. I think the point is, is yeah. investing in yourself. So how yes. do you want to address that? Yeah. yeah. So important. I'm so happy you, you tapped into that. And honestly, in my opinion, it's getting worse. It's actually yeah. getting worse for the younger generations. Yes. You know, I have three daughters and two sons, and I see for them how the not enoughness is reinforced yeah. with social media. Um, actually, one of my daughters, you know who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of her. She's taking a full social media detox. She's off. She awesome. sent a message to all her friends. If you need me, text my phone or call my phone. I'm off for the next few months. And I asked her, I how are that. you feeling about it? so much better. That not enoughness narrative was affecting her so deeply and so many of us. And mm -hmm. it's not a question of age. It's not just the young women. It's oh, no. all oh, of yeah. us. We write the comparisons, the, yeah, it's, yes. it's very detrimental. It's very <laughs> detrimental. And I'm a strong advocate of just detoxing. Yeah. So the question of how and when do I invest in myself? If you're listening to these kinds of conversations in your life, you're ready to take that investment. Mm -hmm. And something that I've been doing for many years, even in my surgical practice, where I did pro bono surgeries, I did surgeries for no charge because of a very big need. Mm -hmm. I personally, and not everybody works this way, I personally don't allow money to be a factor in not doing this work. So I do have sliding scales, I do speak to people and that's why I don't put pricing out on the website. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I ask for a conversation. I ask people to just go to the website, type in their name and number and let's have a conversation and look at yeah. where are you at? What are your needs? I think and believe that this work is vital to our survival as a humanity, as a human species, yes. that I don't want to withhold the medicine. I feel that this work is truly medicine. And if I'm holding the medicine and you need it, and I'm not giving it to you because you're not paying this or that many dollars and cents, I can't live with myself. So right. I need to feel that I'm giving what I need to give. So I don't think money needs to be a factor 
you can create and manifest what you need, no, right? Right. If you really need it, you find the people. It. That's right. You, <laughs> you manifest do, it. You do. Find the people that will support you. The yes. universe will provide. Just get clear on what do you want. Yes. Pause this video right now. Take a deep breath. We can do it together. Okay. You don't have to pause. We'll breathe. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Let's do that. Okay. Let's just take a moment. Okay. So we've done a lot of talking, a lot of thoughts, a lot of concepts. Just letting the words land. Just allowing the spaces between the words to kind of offer a little bit of extra wisdom, a little silence. Feeling our bodies, feeling any physical sensations, noticing our body breathing us. We are not breathing the body. The body is breathing us. Noticing the mind, what thoughts are coming, are there thoughts of impatience, resistance, thoughts saying, can you just get back to the talking, I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, it happens, I know it, I've been there. And just notice, without judgment, and even if there's judgment, notice the judgment, it's okay, everything is welcome in this moment. And as you begin to ground and feel yourself settling in your body, settling in this present moment, bring yourself the question of what do I want? What do I want in this moment in my life? Not yesterday, not 10 years ago, not when I got married 30 years ago and made certain career choices. No, not next year, not in 10 years when I retire. No, no, now, right here, right now. What do I want? to create in my life and just breathe into it feel how it feels to ask that question you don't need to think it you can think about it later by journaling writing it down but just in this little moment of one more minute of this little contemplative meditation ask yourself how does it feel to ask the question, what do I want? Am I worthy of asking that question? Am I worthy of pursuing what it is that I want to create in my life? Does fear come up? Does resistance, judgment, uh, these questions are not for you. These questions are for other people. Do I deserve it? Do I not deserve it? Or just noticing. Noticing what's coming up. This is how we open up the spaces of truth and authenticity within ourselves. Taking a deep breath. And coming back into the physical space, if your eyes were closed, begin to slowly open your eyes, maintaining a little bit of that gentleness, that quietness, that calmness that we just cultivated for ourselves. And bringing yourself back into the world like a newborn baby, you know, just curiosity and awe. I have this body I can work with and I have these beautiful people that are supporting me and are here for me in my life. I'm so excited to see what I create.
<laughs> I love that. That was awesome. Thank you. If you sat that through was... that and didn't fast forward. <laughs> and if you fast forward, good for you for honoring yourself. That was great. Thank mm. you. Mm. You know, I... Um, it, it was just, it was, it was great. I, I think How that did it, feel? I, it felt really good. You know, it's, it's funny. Um, I, so I do this every day, you know, I, I really do put out to the universe. What is it that I desire? How is it I want to feel? What, what are these things that I want? And it was uncomfortable the first time I did it, you know, because you sit there and go, wait, what do I want? And then you got to really take a deep, like you inventory and a deep dive. And, and then these things come up like, wait, but I want this, but I'm doing this. How do I get to that? Yes. You know? Yes. And I think that for people is like, because people do have these revelations in the work that we do with this. It's like, oh my God. And big revelations. Like, I hate my job. I hate my partner. Yeah. Now <laughs> what? Hate. That's a big, that's a, yeah. right? But I am not fulfilled in my yeah. partnership. I, I, I desire to do things different. I, you know, what, it, what do I really, really want? And that is a hard question. And so, um, and that's why we, when we also do this work with people, even when we start creating the foundation, it's what is your vision for yourself? Mm -hmm. Because... If you have the vision, you know what you need to do to get to the vision. It's, you know, and, and it's the vision of, of like you, you know, we had talked about this yesterday. I, I meditate on abundance, opportunity, and freedom. And then you said something yesterday about freedom. Yeah. And it really is, especially as women, the freedom yeah. to choose. Yes. And as you say that, so much comes up for me. But one thing is that. March 1st is Women's History Month, yeah. and March 8th is International Women Celebration Month. And so women are, we're all about women because <laughs> we are yeah. it for March. All yeah, of you guys, yeah, take great. a sidestep. It's all yeah. about the women for March. So it reminds us that we have done so much to come to this place right now, to the modern woman, where I, as a foreigner, an immigrant from immigrant parents, English is my third language, mm -hmm. can get to a point of studying, becoming a surgeon, having an incredible career, having my family and children, and then shifting and, and continuing to grow and transform in my own self. I mean, these are privileges beyond yes. knowing for many other cultures on this earth. So we are living in such a privileged time as female bodies. And what are we doing about it? Mm -hmm. Are we living from a space of automatic robotic groundhog day or are we actually slowing down enough to ask the important questions of what do i want because once you know what you want as you beautifully stated meryl you plug it into the gps <laughs> because the car doesn't know where to go if you don't know where to go exactly so we need to figure out our own gps our own path and then we get the support and what you said about how do we go from here to there it's beautiful because this is exactly what transformational work is about, yeah. transformational coaching. It's going from where I am to where I want to be. It's bridging that gap. And that's where there's stuff that stands in the way. My yeah. friends, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's where our belief systems, that's where the thoughts that we keep telling ourselves, that's where our old little or bigger traumas or discomforts or yeah. life we don't even have to call it the loaded word trauma which scares right, a lot of right, people right. i don't want to talk about my trauma right can we just say life experience yeah. challenging life experience we've all had that whether it's you know bullying as a child in school to health uh, challenges etc you know so many so many different life experiences mm -hmm. so that is what's holding you back all of us from where we are now to where we want to go right and that's where again I know I, I, I'm being repetitive but that's the key that interrelational space when yes. we come into a space of space of support of someone who can see us clearly and and get into that soul surgery and dissect out the thoughts and the belief systems and begin to open up the blinders we start to see yeah, what's a, possible that is a great analogy yeah. and I think part of that you know from where we are now to where we want to be not asking the question of how I'm going to get there. Knowing yeah. that if you put out what you want and the yeah. feeling of how that makes you feel, yeah. 
that that the universe will answer that. It That's is it. not the more we try and figure out the how, the more resistance yeah. we're putting out. Yeah. Right? So it's not how am I going to get there? It's yeah. here is where I desire to get. I am going to live in that feeling of, oh, what does it feel like when I'm there, right? And so for me, I'm like, okay, I want a beautiful house that's on a water, some water, it doesn't have to be the beach, it's some water, and I envision my garden and the flowers and my amazing kitchen. Like, this is what I visualize. And I don't say, how am I going to get it? I say, here's what I want, universe. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? Listen up. Listen Let up. me continue to do all these things. And that feeling of how does it feel to yes. be in this house? How does it feel yes. to be gardening in this house? That is what the universe is listening to. And it's going to hand me back. And yes. so I know it sounds corny to say that, but this is really how manifesting works. This is how <laughs> mindfulness works, right? The corny <laughs> stuff is corny for a reason. It's exactly. true. That's why we right. keep repeating it. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think we've both, and the only reason I speak to that is because I have been doing the work and I have watched over the months how doing the work and staying present and focused and embodied in it what it has allowed me to accomplish. And so that is why I continue to do it. You know, I'll something will happen and I'll look up in the sky and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it really is about just relinquishing. You know, yes. we're, 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 we want to control. That's we it. always want to control, That's control. It. We can't just let it happen. Yeah. Let it be. You know, um, so good, so good. Uh, all these openings uh, into these spaces. Thinking is overrated. <laughs> Yes. I'm just going to say it. And I'm a thinker. I've been a thinker. And, you know, uh, Descartes years ago said, I think, therefore I am. And that created a whole lot of uh, yeah. centuries of problems for us because we overvalue the thinking mind. Mm -hmm. Now, what I say is, I think, therefore I am not. Because if I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm not present. Right. So that's the opposite of what I'm working on, which is being in the here and the now. Because what I do now creates my future a hundred right there is no future that's going to happen it's now that is creating the future and in may i'm going to be going to spain to the camino de santiago which is oh, a very nice. big walk yeah. which i'm very excited about and there's a beautiful phrase and i do speak spanish so the phrase but i will translate for uh, those of us that don't there's a beautiful phrase which encompasses exactly what you just spoke to meryl which is el camino se hace caminando the path creates itself as we walk the path. Mm. So el camino se hace caminando. The path walks itself, meaning we don't have to know the how. The how actually provides us with resistance and judgment <laughs> and right. I can't and all that good stuff. I'll give you an example. I have a client who is a, a young doctor in a foreign country. I work in, with uh, internationally as well as locally, uh, of course, uh, virtually on Zoom with the international clients. She's a physician. She wants to bring all of the underserved population, uh, the medicine that it requires in her country. And one of her dreams is to create a medical school, a holistic medical school. Mm. And as I've heard the phrase before, if your dream doesn't scare you a little bit, it's not big enough, yeah, right. right? And she is, she kind of said it with a small voice, you know, this dream. And she said, but I just have no idea how to do it. And I told her exactly what I'm sharing with you and what Meryl just said, which is the how creates itself. Mm -hmm. El camino se hace caminando. The path creates itself. All we need to do is get out of the way. Yeah. So truly the work of mindfulness and awareness and acceptance is just releasing the barriers. Yep. It's releasing the hurdles and noticing that, okay, when I free myself from the prison of the mind, when I release those thought concepts and those belief systems that are actually holding me back and are usually not true. Yep. I get to question uh -huh. them to, to, to really check in with them. Are they really true or not? So that's the work of mindfulness yeah. and the, the, the path creates itself. The universe provides. That's amazing. Mm. That is amazing. Yeah. So we, again, we could probably go for another hour, <laughs> but, but we're at, but we're at the 60 minute mark. So, um, I, wow, what an amazing conversation. Mm. And thank mm. you for that it little was. meditation in there yes. too. Uh, this won't be our last conversation. We have no, so much to talk about. I'm sure. Uh, any final closing thoughts? Other, than, I, I mean, I feel like what you just said was really like almost perfect. Like we should probably mm. end it there unless there's anything you want to add to that. You know what? I think um, 
I, I, I'm really grateful for opening these spaces. I believe this is the medicine. I believe this mm -hmm. is what we need to take us to that next evolution of humankind. 100%. I believe we need it and our children need it. Yes. And I'll just say uh, the beautiful words of Rumi that are echoing from the 13th century. The breeze has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. Nope. What is it that you want? Don't go back to sleep. Thank you, my friends. I'm here to wake up with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was phenomenal. Thank you, Thank you. Um, and, and one thing that you and I, I'm going to put it out there, and I would love feedback from you guys, you listeners. Um, you know, we had talked about maybe doing some kind of workshop. Yes. So yes. throwing it out there, if you guys are interested, come, give us feedback. Come. We would love to be able to offer some kind, you know, some yes. of Tammy's work. Yes. We can talk about yes. the nutrition piece as well. So 100%. we're going to throw that to the universe and manifest it. And uh, let's uh, hear from you as well. So with that, thank you again. Thank you, Meryl. So, love, so love, love, love <laughs> what you're doing. I'm such a big fan. Right back at you. Right thank back you. at you. All right, everybody, make it a great day. Take a minute to be present and mindful and be in the now. Mm. This is your Rebel Nutrition signing off. Make it a great day.